so pigments. Now, we spoke about them um, a lot. Maybe you've got, um, we've got one here. We've got the pigment sets. You can buy color sets, staining. Everybody does pigments these days, let's face it. Okay, now, how to use your pigments. Very different ways of doing it. Okay, so we're gonna break it up really into sort of two groups, obviously dry and wet, okay? Now, if you're using them dry, something, you know, perhaps you wanna give various types of effects, such as dusting, light grime, things like that. Obviously using them dry is perfect for it. The trouble is though, it's actually sealing them down and things like that, where when they're wet, that's a lot easier. So there's lots of fours and against to using them. Personally, um, from my point of view, I'm more of a wash guy, okay? And it's nothing to do that we happen to manufacture a range of washes and all the rest of it. It's just I find that I can get a pigment effect instantly by using a wash rather than actually messing around with pigments and stuff like that. Now, that's not to say they don't have their place in the hobby because they certainly do, because there's certain things you can do with pigments you can't do with a wash, okay, and vice versa. Now, if you were talking about doing it somewhat in dry, okay, first of all, you have to know is pigments are extremely messy. So always protect your stuff as best as you can. So what I'm gonna do here, we've got the Merkaba, which we finished not so long ago, all right? And all we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a couple of simple little steps. So if we can get this onto, and he will sit on his edge, which is quite handy. Okay, so we've got it something like this. So if we just get the cameras all in position so you can see exactly what we're doing here. So if we just lift that one up just a tad. <clears throat> right, okay, so we've got the wash effect which did all of this. This was just purely washes, no pigments on this whatsoever. And as you can see, we've got grime lines and staining and everything else like that, no problem at all. But perhaps we wanna give it sort of more of a sort of dusty look, things like that. First of all, you're gonna need some quite stiff brushes. Okay, you don't want really soft brushes because otherwise it tends to flick it around a little too much. So I tend to use something like this. So here we've got sort of a short head flat brush, okay? So having a look at through your pigments with what you've got. Now I'm just using some of our old stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna grab some mud here. All right. <clears throat> so you have your jar of pigment just like this. So we're just gonna take out a little bit. I'm gonna pop it into the lid. All right, now this is just doing it dry. So you sort of load up your brush, okay? And then you can just dust it round in the area. Now, depending on the surface you're flicking it over would depend on what you sort of get. So because this is over sort of a flat finish, it will grip it a little bit, okay? But because it's just a powder, it's just gonna give a, a light hue over it. Oh, well, you can actually see that, all right? But you can see, if you compare it to the others, it's now giving it a an effect rather than anything else, okay? So we go around and what it's done is technically got caught in all the textures of the paint, just giving it a very subtle color change to that wheel, okay? And depending on how you see it, it goes through. So what you can do, you can grab perhaps some of this mud, okay? And we're just gonna lightly kind of brush it down, perhaps just on an edge. Okay, and what I tend to do is blow off any excess you got. Don't rub it, otherwise you're gonna end up getting it anywhere you don't. But using it dry, you can just sort of do this effect. Okay, so just the bottom half of this skirt, we're just gonna add further, a little bit of weathering and perhaps around these wheels as well. So we're just gonna scoot them around just to dust them up a little bit. But because you're on a flat surface, it will grab it. It actually holds onto it quite successfully. Now, I was saying, the drawback to this is how to seal it down, because as soon as you put any type of sealer over this, it will fade it back. So hope, what you really want to do is aim to have this as not handling it at all, so you're left with exactly what you get, okay? But this way, we just do around here. It's just a way of adding a, another layer to your, perhaps your weathering. Okay, so that's all we're just gonna put some up over this rubber area here all right and then what we're going to do is just going to flick it around just a little bit on top of everything okay so we just pop it down and then it'll just add another layer of weathering in here and you can have a lot of fun with this and you can go around and certainly if you didn't like it and it was pretty horrible and all the rest of it you could get rid of it pretty much i would say I won't take all of it, but you're gonna get most of it off because it's dry. When you start using it wet and things like that, it becomes a real problem. But there we go, as you can see, it's just added another layer 
a sort of grind to it. And then if you were wanted to, you could get this all to, to work here. But certainly round the back, we did it all with washes down here, but we can add a little bit of mud and perhaps we'll flick some of the back here and it'll just grime up quite nicely in these areas. Okay, and this is just to say, using them dry. There's a couple of other effects you do. I don't really want to wreck the tank if I'm honest, but I'll show you anyway. But if you put on quite a bit in a said area, perhaps if we just do this rear part, because we can obviously get this all off again if needed, which is quite handy, but we're just going to over weather just a little bit all this around the back here. And we're going to pretend perhaps it's got picked up loads of muck and grime over this entire section. Okay, and don't forget about weathering. There's no real right and wrongs to it. You do it until you're happy with it. The only thing I would say is stop. When you think you've gone too far, literally stop at that point. Chances are you haven't, but it's always a nice little spider sense tingling that says, I'm wrecking this. If you stop then and walk away from it, you can perhaps tone it back a little bit and move on. With all pigments, I'd stick the lids on straight away because as I say, they're particularly nasty. Now, what you can do, grabbing a cotton bud or your Q-tip, doing it dry, you can just give it a rub and you'll notice it on here. You can knock it back just a little bit. Okay. And you can certainly do various things with it because you can wet it just a little bit, dry it off on the back of your hand, okay? And you can do little streaky marks and various things. Okay, and again, you don't worry too much because when it dries, it will go very subtle. It looks quite horrendous when you do it first of all, but as I say, if you dry it down, just keep using that one. Okay, then you come in with the dry side, and you can just blend. All right, as you see, you can do all types of really quite smart weathering just like that. Now the other thing you can do is obviously wet a brush and drag. So if we just find a smallish brush. Okay, so you can wet it and you can do streaking effects with a wet brush. Okay, and it's just a case of taking your time. Obviously I'm speeding through this. Okay, you let it dry, it dries back and you get those little differences in the shades and tones and everything else like that. That's the way of doing it. Now, to seal that in if you wanted to, my only recommendation is, is not to if you can help it, but if you have to, I would say flat coat, good two foot away and very, very lightly build up two or three layers over the top of it. But pigment, by its nature, as we'll show you in a moment, has a habit of finding its way through. Okay, so it is best not to handle this stuff. It gives great effect as is, because what you see is what you get. As soon as you try and overcoat it, you'll lose it. But basically, that's the technique of using it dry. It acts as a light stain over a flat coat. Obviously, it's not going to work on a gloss because it's got nothing to grab onto. It needs something to physically bite onto to give it. But you can take your time, and if you want to, you can build up. And certainly, what we did with the washes all over this one, which was literally a two-minute job to do that, you could do the same thing as well. So you could take your time and various colors, obviously different manufacturers do a whole menagerie of colors, but certainly if you're using sands, dirts, things like that, you can give grime areas to various parts of it, polish stuff clean, everything else. But as I said, handling wise is the thing with it because I've just done a tiny bit there and we're covered, it's everywhere already. It's not the nicest stuff to work with. Now, if you're gonna be using it wet, okay, that's a totally different ball game. Okay, you can make up uh, basically a type of wash, okay, which is a pigment wash. Works really, really well. So easiest way to do that, if we've got a nice cleanish cup, all you do, pop it down. Now, a couple of options, you can just use water. I find water tends to bead up a little bit and you need it to go good to sort of capillary action and flow. So what I tend to use is a little bit of thinners. This is just acrylic thinners couple of drops, okay, we type the dark dirt again, and what you'll notice is, you just hoof a little bit out, pop it in, and what this basically does is make a form of wash, but as you can see, it's quite a muddy, chunky type lump to it, just like this, okay, and we'll turn back to our tank again, we just lift him up, 
Okay, so exactly the same thing. You can grab hold of it and we can go around and we can slap it into the wheels and actually make quite a muddy look as if we've been through heavy mud. So if I just pick this one out here so we can just pretend we've gone through some real horrible crappy mud okay and you can build it up and basically pigment is paint okay it's basically what the founder of paint is what colors paint so all you're doing is very lightly painting but what this will do will dry back and give you the effect of mud okay on your wheels so if we just bring it all down on this track here and we can pretend we've gone through heavy mud comes a Merlin helicopter If we just continue to pop it up all on the sides around this rear sprocket okay and then you generally coat the entire area as you go right the way around but there we go this gives you a sort of muddy look the great thing is I'm going to grab an airbrush just to dry this if we dry it back It gives a nice look to it, pretty much muddy on there. A couple of things you can do, okay, add a gloss to it. If you add a gloss to it, it'll always have that slightly wet look. So what you can do is you can come along, put the gloss in, it just makes it look wet. Another little tip you can do with it is like with PVA glue. This stuff though, which is quite handy, we don't want to technically break everything, will come off with a bit of a wipe. Okay, and a damp tissue, you can get back to roughly where you were before. And as you can see, by doing it this way, I've got the wash underneath coming off as well. Okay, and there we go. You can wipe off and you can start again. So it's quite maneuverable. It's not like you're using a proper paint which went it down, locks on, you can't do it. Hopefully you can see down in those wheels, you can give it a nice muddy look, something like that all over it. And then usual thing, if you clean off, sorry, it's just plain water in here. Clean your brush off. Pigments by their nature go on for miles, all right? It's a bit like when we've been using India ink, that it just carries on and just goes on and on and on. So what you can do is just wet a bit of cloth here. You can get it and you can grab and you can streak with it and pull it all around and give effects. So what I tend to do is try and keep it quite wet. Then I'll come in with a cotton bud and we'll do streaking with it just to try and blend it a little bit. Dry it down. Hopefully you can see you get some nice different tones of weathering. You can go very heavy weathering like we've done there and blending it in. But again, it's a personal choice. You can carry on, you can do as much or as little as you like and go all the way through. Your other option, of course, if you want to, is to mix it with something like a PVA glue, which I haven't got at the moment here because it's elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do is just show you how you knock this up. So what we're gonna do, just grab a bit of uh, gator glue. Let me just grab another upturned pot. Okay, so we're just gonna Grab a little bit of glue. Okay, just in like that. Then you grab your pigment, and what you'll notice is this will go rock hard. It sets like concrete very, very quickly. Okay, but what you can do with it is you can grab it like this. We're going to need a little bit more in here. Grab a bit more on the brush. Okay, you can pick up the pigment, and then if you wanted to, I'm not gonna do it to be honest, you can bung it on the tank and slap it on. This stuff will dry 
basically clear, but it holds onto the pigment, so it gives the effect of mud. So you can do some great techniques with this. Now, I did a video many, many years ago about doing a brick house, it's old resin brick house, about weathering it with pigments and washes. Best thing to do is go and have a look at this, because I show how to do fire marks and burn marks using this very technique. Because once this dries, it goes completely rock hard, gives a great effect of mud, flicked mud, you know, and all things like that. And as I said, because it goes completely hard, it's not like when you use normal PVA glue and it's always quite soft. You mix pigment with it, it turns to concrete and it's very, very strong. But you can make up some very, very nice sort of weathering effects with it. Again, with armor, things like that, you can go around, you know, and do a menagerie of, of different things. So I'm just gonna clean this brush up a little bit because it's one of my better brushes. Okay, we'll fully clean that all out a little bit later. So there we go, that's two ways of doing it.